Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. It's January 20th, 2021. Uh, got a estate pick for you today. All machinist tools. This was a uh, listing that came up. Um, it was actually for a set of gauge blocks. Uh, I forgot, the, I think the name was Fonda. F o, yeah, it was Fonda. F-O-N-D-A. Fonda gauge blocks. They were the gauge blocks that have holes in them that are identical to my uh, Pratt & Whitney uh, Hoke. H-O-K-E or H-O-Y-K-E, I think is the name on mine, set. Anyways, didn't end up buying those, but I sent the person who was selling those a message because they were about an hour away from me asking if they happen to have any other machinist tools. Sure enough, woman got back to me, explained the situation. Uh, husband was a machinist for quite a few years. He had passed away and she was liquidating his tools. She explained to me there was a large toolbox in the garage loaded with stuff. So made arrangements to go down there and take a look. And uh, unfortunately, the uh, the cream of the crop wasn't there. I think that he probably had another toolbox at work that probably was like a Kennedy or something that had all the good stuff in it. Not that there isn't any good stuff in this pick. There's definitely good stuff in this pick. It just wasn't, uh, it wasn't a really, really awesome pick. Let's put it to you that way. So uh, the toolboxes ended up being just Craftsman toolboxes. It was a top box on a uh, roller. And um, I explained that she probably could sell that to anybody, mechanic, home hobbyist, whatever, that machinists tend to want the Kennedys. So that I really wasn't interested in the box, but I'd be willing to make an offer on buying the entire contents. So what I ended up doing was I uh, went through the whole box a couple times and uh, gave her an offer, which she accepted. And then I proceeded to take everything out of the box, uh, out of the drawers and everything, and put them into uh, cardboard boxes. What I started to do uh, previously, you know, when I go through drawers on toolboxes, there's just a mishmash of this and that and the other thing. So what I started to do before I rolled the tape on this one was I ended up, starting to pre-sort some of the stuff so we can kind of get an idea of what we've got for taps and bits and end mills and that stuff and kind of get that out of the way and then we can look at some of the other goodies that are in there. Yeah, you know, so typical of a lot of these picks. Uh, there's stuff all over the place in the drawers and not always organized. Uh, he had several of these little red plastic uh, little trays here that were in there but they were all just all kinds of stuff just kind of thrown into them. So I dumped all of those out and uh, sorted through them here. So uh, there is one box that there's a bunch of stuff in the bottom of I haven't picked out yet. So we might be able to add to these totals a little bit. For the most part though, this is pretty much all of the drill bits that were in there. And there's some good ones in here. You know, there's a lot of these little stub drill bits that are kind of handy to have. Um, oh, that's an end mill. <laughs> All right, but for the most part, we've got uh, a lot of short stub drill bits, some really, really small stub drill bits here. And then over here, I've got all of the uh, center drills. Um, in addition to the center drills, there is some countersinks. Here's some of those Weldon style, uh, like zero clearance countersinks or whatever they call them. This little guy right here, this little guy right here is solid carbide. I got a micrometer wrench. Decent lot, decent sized load of end mills here. Um, you know, used end mills, but still got some use to them. There's a roughing end mill there. And there are, here and there, there are a few brand new ones like that one. Put most of the smaller sizes in here. And then I set aside a couple of interesting ones. Here we got a couple of uh, different sizes, three different sizes of these uh, spot face or um, these piloted end mills. They've got a, a shank that sticks out in front of them that can follow a uh, pre-drilled hole and then allow the end mill to uh, basically mill out a recess for a uh, cap screw. These are a little pricey. Um, 
these right here, these two, have little set screws because you can actually change the size of that little pilot. This is a little radiusing end mill. This, I think, started out its life as just a, a deburring tool. There we go, there's a dovetail end mill and a key seat cutter. I pulled these out so we could get a good look at them. This, believe it or not, it, it almost, at first I thought it was a reamer uh, or tri twist drill with the point broken off, but that's actually a, a very long, skinny, four flute end mill. Tiny sucker, that's my pinky next to it. And then look at these. Uh, that's a really tiny end mill there. And this one is the, so small, I had to look at it on the magnification to see what it is. It's a two flute end mill, tiny sucker. This is pretty much most of the taps that I found in the first couple of boxes. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff in the bottom of that last box. We'll probably be adding to that total with some larger taps. Uh, this stuff in the center here, in the past, this has been stuff that I usually discard and I throw in a scrap metal bucket I have. One of those five gallon pails and then when it gets pretty full, I'll take it to the scrap yard because there's quite a bit of weight when you're dealing with just small stuff like this and you fill one of those pails. But uh, lately I've taken to the idea of just having a draw to throw a lot of this stuff in because it occurred to me that, you know, when you go to find, when you go to make a really small part, sometimes it's nice to have a small piece of stock to sacrifice. So, you know, something like that might come in handy. Don't know the composition of it. Uh, this, for instance, this is brass. These are two little short pieces of brass. This is a little piece of brass plate. Uh, this is a little hunk of aluminum. And this might be hardened, so I don't know yet. I actually thought that was a uh, edge finder at first, but it's not. Then these caught my eye. Um, they look real familiar to me, as if like I should know what these are, but it's not coming to me exactly what. They stick them up on top here so you can get a better look at them. So, I don't know, for some reason these look familiar to me. I almost think these are keys that are supposed to go on motor shafts. But I'm not sure. The oval shape, I think that I've seen electric motors that have oval shaped holes oval shaped grooves on the shaft that these would sit in. I might be wrong on that. Who knows? It might be something very special he, ma he made for something and they just ended up piled up in the box. These are burrs and uh, these right here are also burrs, really tiny ones. I don't think any of them are carbide. Of course, when they're that small, it's kind of hard to tell by weight. <laughs> Found all those all the reamers that I found, I put into this tray here. Um, a lot of different sizes. And uh, some of them are pretty small. And then there was just these springs. Springs are always always handy to have for projects and things like that. Here's a couple of scales that I found in there. Uh, this top one is actually a nice brown and sharp. It's got a little bit of a stain on it there. Uh, it's interesting. It's got a brown and sharp part number on it. I don't think I remember seeing one with a full part number. It's a 599-311604, and I think usually when I find these, they're just marked 604, so it's kind of interesting that it has the full number on it. This one here is... Well, it's got a nice satin chrome finish, I can tell you that. This is calibrated in the USA by Spicek or Speak. I've seen the Spivek or something like that. Los Angeles, California. I've I've seen these before. Can't remember the name of it. How do you say the name or whatever? <clears throat> Just going along, picking up all of the little loose uh, carriage bolts, carriage bolts, cap screws, washers. These intrigue me. Notice these have holes through them almost as if like a little Tommy bar is supposed to go through them like they were on a clamp or something, but I haven't found anything they would fit yet. This is a mystery to me. So it can thread onto something. So my first thought was it's a nozzle, right? For air or something, right? Problem is that's a blind hole, doesn't go all the way through. And there's no hole in the tip. First, I thought the hole was so small I couldn't see it, like for really high, high pressure or something, right? But I'm pretty darn convinced there is no hole there whatsoever. Yes, under magnification, I can confirm that this is just 
some sort of unknown thing. So does anybody get an idea what that might be? Even a razor blade. Why throw it out? It's brand new. They're handy in the shop. This is a nice little tool. This is a little collet holder with a teeny tiny drill bit in it. So I think it'd be downright funny to put this in the Wells Index and see whether or not I could actually drill a hole without that snapping. I think you need a lot more rip'ems with a CNC machine to use a drill bit like that. Not to mention a spindle that isn't uh, 30 years, they're over 30 years old. Found several handles for deburring tools, which we will get to. Um, and then I found all of these little deburring tips. So we'll divide them up amongst those handles and then have to have a sale on deburring tool handles. On deburring tools. The usual plethora of paperwork. This is the stuff that I did keep because it's more in, you know, in keeping with what the average hobby machinist might need. Uh, you know, typical Starrett decimal equivalents by Titex Tools of Greenfield, Massachusetts. This is interesting. This is a Haas Machinist CNC Reference Guide. Huh. Okay. Another card. Another decimal. What is this? Geometric tolerancing and symbology for engineering drawings. Oh, well, there you go. This is something I certainly don't need at all. And you, what, what toolbox would not be complete without a copy of the car lanes, trigonom trigonometry tables, and handy references for engineers? Got several of these laying around. I'm going to have a freebie giveaway, I think, to some of my regular customers there on the, on the tool site. While going through all the various end mills that I came across, I set these aside because these are all solid carbide, which was a nice little bonus. So that one right there, that's a double-ended four flute solid carbide, excellent condition. Uh, this one here looks brand new, four fluter. Big sucker. There's no markings on the tool itself, but this says Pioneer Tool Company of West Springfield, Massachusetts. Three quarter inch four flute end mill. Microgreen. Here's a little itty bitty one. Four flute solid carbide. Here's a little four flute carbide roughing end mill. You can tell the roughing end mills because of the lines. It's a nice, good size one there. This is a uh, Fullerton, three quarter inch, four flute. Again, perfect condition. This has got some heft to it. Big sucker. This is a one inch gar, G-A-R-R. -R. It's a one inch gar end mill. How much do you think that cost you? Another Pioneer tool. Can't quite make out what this is, but that's also I checked it. These uh, caught my eye, interesting. The cases are Carbide Technology, Worcester, Massachusetts. I n have never heard of this company. I have no idea whether or not this is actually the end mill that belongs in there, because there's no markings to indicate what's supposed to be in here. Just a warning on the back saying if you grind it that you know it's gonna make dust that's bad for you. There's no I couldn't find any markings on the actual end mill. And then this one has one of these in it, which I think is marked something else. I think this is another gar. Yeah, this is another gar end mill, so this was probably just put in here for safekeeping. That might be what's supposed to be in here. But that's interesting. Carbide technology. I'll have to look and see if that company even exists any longer. Worcester, Massachusetts is 20 minutes north of me. That's why I that's why I found it interesting. These are some interesting chamfering bits or countersinks, I guess. Um, they've got a two-piece construction and there's a screw that goes in at an angle here. So by adjusting the screw, you can actually adjust how much this slides down this incline right here, which would have the effect 
of changing this cutter clearance here, which is kind of interesting. So I don't know if the idea is that as, as it gets dull and it wears, you just adjust this so that this continues to be proud of the, to, to, to maintain cutter clearance. I don't know. Two of these are marked McCroskey and uh, one of these is marked uh, Nobur, N-O-B-U-R, but I think Nobur might be just a trade name that McCroskey used on some of these. This one, the shank is broken off, but he held on to it because I guess he figured still could grab it and call it. Um, and then there was a whole bunch of these. These are gauge pin holders. So the idea would be you would put your uh, appropriate size gauge pin, one in each end for inspection work. Green for go, red for no go, right? This one even still has a gauge pin in it. But I did not get any gauge pin sets or see any gauge pin sets with this pick, so who knows. These were stuck to the bottom of the toolbox draw, some kind of goop on them. Hopefully that'll clean up. I don't see any particular brand name on these. I went through the other cardboard boxes of stuff and uh, managed to fish out all the small bits and stuff and this is all the extra taps that I ended up finding so uh, that's a pretty nice assortment there to sweeten the pot a lot of them look like they're in great shape too this box was for uh, it says William Grant's miniature collection scotch whiskey so this must have been like a series of nips that were in here or something of different scotches also found some more drill bits. Found just a couple more, a few more center drills. And then these uh, are all really small. I think that's a drill bit. Missed a couple of drill bits, but most of these right here are, are really small end mills. Some of them look like they might be carbide. I mean, really tiny suckers. One new tap left in there. Oh, quite a few in here. Eight thirty-two. All right, those are popular sizes. Found one more of these adjustable uh, chamfering or countersinking cutters. A couple more keyway slaughters. Found some more solid carbide end mills, set those aside. A little itty bitty one here and a roughing one, good size four fluter there. And then there's another uh, roughing one identical to this one in this box, it looks brand new. I found these little suckers right here mixed in with some of the little tiny end mills. Upon closer inspection, realized they are tiny boring bars. You must have had a craftsman tap and die set because this is a small Craftsman tap wrench and uh, a larger one here. They're both Craftsman. I also found these two uh, pretty nice tap wrenches. They're reversible. I don't know who makes them. Um, they're both clearly marked made in Germany. And they seem like they're pretty nice quality. And there's two sizes. They look like they're in great shape. Um, so the idea is, well, these obviously are ratcheting. I don't know, I might keep these for myself. I have, uh, I think I've got some generals that are reversible. And I was, think I was trying to make a complete set of those. I don't remember how, how far along I had gotten in that quest. <laughs> so I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna sell these or the generals. So here's a nice depth gauge. Um, it's not a Sterrett. It is marked Made in USA. Well, let me move this. Maybe it's on the blade where I can't see it. No. So there's no markings on the blade to indicate who makes this. It's kind of a neat one. Uh, it's got the groove in it so that this would, you know, lock it in a 90 degree angle. But then it has the ability that if you loosen this enough, 
you can actually swivel this and it actually becomes almost like a protractor and the angles are clearly marked so that's kind of neat but I have no idea who makes it empty out all the files together I can see that a lot of these are Nicholson so good quality ones there's also some uh, random pattern files here and then I found this box which is a case for a pattern file set so I'm gonna see if I can't identify which of these pattern files go in here oh except for these six right here these nine are all Nicholson so they probably all belong in this box right here 9 out of 12 ain't bad. 